how do companies get away with advertising retinol at high concentrations but when then you look at the back of the packaging, the concentration of retinol is much lower. And welcome to a, another edition of the Week in Newsletter. This week, we have a focus on skin, We're very much focus on skin at the moment, using our virtual skincare service, asking about helping patients with skin concerns, and also talking about how do companies get away with advertising retinol at high concentrations, but when then you look at the back of the packaging, the concentration of retinol is much lower. So, you know, how much retinol is actually in my skincare product? That's what we'll be discussing today in this week's Vasana newsletter. I'm Dr. Sunny Desi, and this is Vasana Live. Thank you for watching. So I promised you a little bit about how skincare companies advertise their retinol. You know, they have high concentration on the front, but then they, on the back, it's a much, much lower percentage. But before we do that, I, th I thought I'd share a little bit about a clinic with you. So our virtual skincare services working very well and um, those patients are booking in we're sending you a link or there's we're sending them a link and in that link is a questionnaire then they can download the skin analysis tool that then allows them to look at their skin so what the skin analysis tool is it's it's, it's comparing your skin to 70 da um, a database of 70,000 medical images with common problems things like acne rosacea lines wrinkles <laughs> volume loss skin dryness skin oiliness focusing very much on the lower eyelids um, the upper eyelids um, lines and wrinkles above. So it gives you a very comprehensive uh, picture of how your skin compares. The score is out of 100. And most people are scoring around 70. In some cases, below 70 highlights a problem. That's where the skin analysis tool will highlight, highlight things into red. So what I would say that if you are having skin problems, uh, this time of year, a lot of patients are getting breakouts along the jawline, spot breakouts, not necessarily acne. Some rosacea sufferers are getting um, breakouts as well. That's a consequence of the weather, temperate climate, stress, lack of vitamin D. There's a whole host of things as to why skin may be fluctuating, but our skin analysis tool is really useful. Send the results back to us, either book in for a virtual consultation or you can actually just get a more in-detail, in-depth report of uh, the skin analysis. So if you are interested, do uh, DM us, um, email us at information at vasana.com, or just check out previous newsletter videos and in regards to how the skin analysis tool works. Thank you. So last but not least, what is the strength of the retinol on my skincare product? Is it 2%, 3%, 7% or is it much lower? So I'm going to refer to some notes. If you see me glancing down, I am going to read some notes. So this information was actually brought to our attention or through education from um, one of our uh, collaborators or partners, um, Skin Masterclass Pro. It's a, a system that we use, which was designed by um, a professional skincare formulator to help us understand what is actually in skincare what the inky list, the ingredients list on the back actually means, what each of those little ingredients means, what the actives are, what the inactives are, what the preservatives are. So um, hopefully you'll find this interesting. So, you know, is it 2%, 5% or even 7% retinol in a product? You know, how is it possible that brands, you know, are they, are they cheating? Are they scamming us when they, when they do that? So the secret is about combining formulation and marketing strategies together. So complexes such as retinol complexes are frequently used. So it's not pure retinol as if I was going to prescribe, um, for example, um, we're not really meant to mention drug names, but if I was to prescribe a retinol form to you, then that's pure retinol. What we're talking about is where skincare companies combine retinol into complexes. And so what those skincare companies do, they buy those complexes in from chemical manufacturers. And so they already come stabilized and ready to use. So it's a cosmetic formulation. So I guess it is a little bit cheating because a skincare company isn't making that retinol themselves. They're not making it in-house, they're buying a complex in. So complexes use brands which are not pure retinol. It's a mix of solvents, stabilizers, antioxidants, and encapsulation with fatty acids. So uh, one, for example, one brand um, is Vitalese. It's an example of a popular retinol complex. Now you wouldn't have heard of Vitalese necessarily, unless it's the manufacturers themselves who make Vitalese. What, they, what skincare companies will do is they will buy Vitalese in and then combine it with their own products. So the active ingredient is still retinol, but it also includes other ingredients. This is the complex. So not retinol in its pure form, because that's prescription only, or 
if the company's made it themselves. So um, the complex can be uh, retinol encapsulated in wax, glycerin, antioxidant formulation, vitamin E, and that's to help the retinol be stable so that it can be transported and moved around. For example, not that we do this, but the Inky List is a popular product. Their retinol eye cream is an example that has 3% vitally stabilized retinol compound, which actually only equates to a very small concentration. So what I'm saying is that you've got company advertising 3% encapsulated retinol. So that's the stabilized, how much stabilized retinol is in the complex, but actually in the whole product itself, for example, the Inky, um, Inky List uh, retinol, eye retinol cream, it's 0.09% so of pure retinol. So it's very low. It's a safe concentration to use. So the conclusion of this little kind of complex chat is that the actual percentage of pure retinol will always fall within a permissible range. So although what's advertised may be much higher, and that's okay because the complex itself will contain that formulation or that, that strength of retinol, the actual concentration or strength of pure retinol is actually much lower. And that's how cosmetic companies get away with it. It's frequently used by cosmetic companies due to a simple reason, is that because our brains respond to a higher concentration. So if I say to you something, I've got I've got 3% or 7% or 5%, um, well, maybe not even 3%, if I say I've got 5% encapsulated retinol in a product, you're definitely going to say, well, the higher strength means it's better where actually the, 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 the strength of pure retinol, so not encapsulated retinol, but pure retinol, will be much lower, like 0.09%. And that's how cosmetic companies get away with it, because our brains are geared to more is better, but not necessarily so. I hope you found that explanation of encapsulated retinol or retinol complexes versus the actual strength of pure retinol um, useful. It helps you to understand when you're looking at a product and saying it's saying 5% retinol. Well, actually, that's encapsulated complex. It's not actually the strength of pure retinol. If you do want any more information, then please do you know book in for a virtual consultation or email us. Uh, please add comments in below. We always do appreciate them, however they are. I'm always grateful that people are watching these. So um, a little bit of a shorter newsletter this week, very busy in clinic. I do want to always share and educate. Um, if you have any questions, please do email us. Otherwise, that's me, Dr. Sunny Desi, for another weekly newsletter from Vasana Life. Thank you for watching.